Hey y'all, welcome, 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 welcome back to another episode of Tea with Tisa, Tisa Tattles, or Trap House Cult Talks, whatever you want to talk about it. Um, welcome back. We are literally here um, because of Monique. Now, I know what y'all saying, not the Monique from Binder Time. No, no, no. We're talking about Netflix Monique. We're talking about Daddy Monique. We're talking about Oprah and Tyler Perry tried to get you blacklisted, Monique, because she's come back to us to talk to the black queens. She's come to talk to her queen. She didn't say black, so we can talk about any queen, right? And what does she want to talk to queens about? Not about the pay gap, not about demanding what you're worth, not about um, anything dealing with children or husband or marriages or knowing your worth. No, 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 no. There is a far more pressing issue in our communities, and you know what that is? Y'all, it's bonnets. It's bonnets. Did y'all know that the one thing keeping women from being treated equally and being respected is bonnets? Did y'all know that? So let's go to the scene of the crime. I just wanted to stop things right here. This is future Tisa talking to present? How does that work? It's future Tisa talking to present you. Anyway, I'm going to drop a mix video right now just so you guys don't have to search the rev and you have a reference point. If you've already seen the video or you don't care, there's timestamps in the description box. Just click on them and I'll jump to the rest of my reaction. But I am going to drop the video just for y'all that have no frame of reference, all right? That way you don't have to search around for like, like I did. Okay, future you guys, you guys can thank, no, present you guys, you can thank future you, no, future me. Whatever, just say thank you. I'll see y'all um, on the other side, all right? And I'm out. Also, before I forget y'all, so I can stop doing these cheesy fade-ins and fades out and actually get some class like Monique was talking about. You know, I want people to respect me, so I gotta do respectable things. Like, comment, subscribe. It really helps me with the algorithm. Um, it helps me get noticed. And as y'all know, I really enjoy bringing this content for you, but wait till the end. I'll, I really just thank you for even coming to this video. Wait for the end to subscribe. Or if you don't, I'll see you for my next video. All right, and away we go. Remember I talked about the editing software. Y'all know I need it. All right, and here we go. Hey, my sweet babies. So, um, it took me a minute to say what I'm getting ready to say because I wanna make sure I'm not saying it in judgment and I wanna make sure I'm saying it from a place of love. Y'all, some of y'all have given me the title of auntie and I'm honored that y'all do that, right? But there are times where auntie gotta talk to her babies and say some real shit. So yesterday, I was in the airport in Atlanta because I'm in Jackson, Mississippi now at Chuckles Comedy Club, right? And we got three shows tonight. We got a matinee at 530, then we got seven, then we got 10, right? And I'm excited. I always love going to the stage. So when we got to the airport yesterday, I was excited like, all right, baby, let's go get them in Jackson, Mississippi. And as we began to walk through the airport, I saw so many actually too many to count and too many for me to tap. But I saw so many of our young sisters in head bonnets, scarves, slippers, pajamas, blankets wrapped around them. And this is how they're showing up to the airport. And it, I've been seeing it not just at the airport, I've been seeing it at the store, at the mall. I've been seeing sisters showing up with these bonnets and headscarves and their slippers. And the question that I'm having to you, my sweet babies, when did we lose pride in representing ourselves? When did we step away of let me make sure I'm presentable when I leave my home? Let me make sure I'm representing the family I created so that if I'm out in the street, I look like I have pride in myself. And I'm not saying no full face of makeup. I'm not saying no full front lace frontal. I'm not saying none of that. All I'm saying is, could you please comb your hair? And if you don't wanna comb your hair, they got enough shit out here now, baby, where you can style yourself up and look like you have pride. I'm not saying you don't have pride, but the representation that you're showing, someone would have to ask you to know that you had it. So my sweet babies, 
for the ones that do call me auntie, I love you for real. Even the ones that don't, I love y'all asses too. But the babies that say auntie to me, please listen to auntie. Always have pride in your representation of you. It's not to get a man. It's not. It is just your representation of you, my sweet babies. So I'm just giving y'all a warning. If I see you in the streets, in the airport, in the Walmart, and you got a bonnet on and you got slippers on and you looking like, what the fuck? A Nikki going to tap you and say, hey, baby girl, show you what you worth. Show you what you deserve. So all of those posts that you see celebrities putting out there saying, hey, queen, hey, queen, hey, queen. Well, can we start putting it into action? So I'm asking our wiser sisters, when we see our little babies out there looking like they just don't care, and I'm not saying y'all don't, it looks like it. Can we just tap them and say, baby girl, you deserve more than what you're showing represent you with pride my babies and that may be a part of us helping our community because if you look like you don't give a damn how you gonna be treated so when I say hey queen I can only say it to the sisters that it belongs to because a lot of us are still in queen training so if you're in queen training, stop being fearful of taking your position. And queens don't walk around with bonnets and headscarves and slippers and pajamas. That's for the house. When you go outside, represent you, baby, like you are worthy and you deserve the title of Hey Queen. I Nikki love y'all for real. And I ain't never going to BS you. Stop wearing them damn bonnets and head scarves looking like don't nobody give a damn about you, nor do you give a damn about yourself. Because you beautiful. So represent it. I love y'all for real, my babies. Monique says that she's in the airport and she's going to her comedy club in Jackson, Mississippi or whatever. Jackson, Florida. I don't know. Somewhere in Jackson something, right? She's going to her comedy club for the shows. And she said that she was walking through the airport and there were too many women for her to tap. What did she need to talk to him about? She looked around and saw women in, 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 in socks and in sweats and sneakers, right? And most of all, most of all, most of all in bonnets. Now, first of all, listen, I say this as an avid traveler. I travel overseas at least once a month. Monique, shut the bleep up. Shut, like, shut up. The level of ignorance, the level of ignorance that is in this woman's statements we're going to go into. But also, what are we as a culture going to start taking pride in what we have and stop shaming ourselves when are we going to break these mindset these generational curses that come from our aunts that come from our uncles our aunties our uncles our grandmothers our grandfathers sometimes sadly enough they might even come from your mom and dad your sisters and brothers in your home but when are we going to stop these thoughts that are literally bred into us through shame First of all, dummy, when you are on a plane, right, especially as you go into first class, well, I know when she was young, the father wore a three-piece suit, the mom got dressed in her church, uh, uh, her church finest and put the friendly socks with the, with the patent leather Mary Janes on to fly on a plane. I know when Monique was probably a kid, a plane cost the same as three months of rent, right? But right now and around these parts, right? A flight anywhere is what, $200? You can jump on a flight. It literally is akin to taking a bus somewhere. This is what is going on with the airport. So the fact that the airport, you are, the airplane is providing a service to me. It is transporting me. What Monique said is equivalent to the idiot saying you need to get dressed up to get on a bus. When you are in first class, you don't realize that when it comes to first class, they are wearing sneakers, they are wearing sets, they are doing something comfortable. They are, now I doubt they have hair bonnets, but let's talk about that hair bonnet and that inherent shame that we are teaching ourselves, that our aunties that wait a while because they're saying out of love. You're not saying it out of love, Monique. You're saying it because you have been brainwashed. And I find it ironic 
that you're getting on live and posting a video about looking yourself and using your best and you have don't even have a bra on your edges aren't even laid and you're in an old robe but i guess that's okay for you right because you've earned your place in respect but let's get into what monique was really saying because this shit has me heated what is she talking about when are we going to start having shapes like 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 love our culture you remember 10 years ago where it was like no sneakers, no sweats, no service. There was a lot of jokes because basically what they were saying is we don't want any black people around because that's what black people, when we got dressed up, we were in sweats, we were in hot sneakers, we were in ultra cat, we were in ultra casual stuff because that was hot shit to us, right? That was our culture, right? We went all this time with people saying, oh, well, if you want to be let into this restaurant or if you want to be let into this club, then you need to dress a little better. And we shame that part of our culture. But now look, you go into Nima Marcus, you go into the Fendi store, you go into the Christian Dior store, you go into the Louis store. What do they have? What do they have? I dare y'all to tell me that they do not have the same fucking fashions that they shamed us for 10 years ago. Now it's okay to wear $2,000 sneakers, right? Remember when black people were in 2,000 sneakers? Oh, that's what's wrong with y'all. Y'all got 2,000 sneakers, 2,000 dollar sneakers on your feet, but don't got this and that. But now it's cool for everybody to do that. Not everybody says that $2,000 sneakers are better than $2,000 leather shoes. Not everybody wants designer sweats, right? And if you take the price tag out of it, they're still dressing the way the average person in the hood dressed maybe out of need where maybe it wasn't Louis Vuitton sweats, but it was Hanes her way sweats, right? The fact that every single time we shame ourselves and we shame our goddamn culture for what makes us special, what makes us beautiful, what makes it unique. And you know what? In the comments, y'all can get mad if you want. I don't care if nobody sees the beauty of our culture. There's such beauty in our culture. And maybe because it's almost like when you're around people that are especially, especially talented, right? No one knows how talented they are because everybody's talented. But when you leave that culture and you go to a different culture, you see, do you see how much bold, like beauty we had in our culture? Do you see how much beauty we still have? You, Monique Sister does a PSA about bonnets. We'll get into all her craziness about if you want to be treated like a queen, look like one. But Monique sits there and she's going in on bonnets. The same way they went in on do-rags three years ago. The same way there's now designer do-rags. The same way if you go to any place in Eastern Europe, overseas, they're wearing, the, the guys and the girls are wearing velvet do-rags and don't even know why because they just think that shit looks good. Do you know why? Because it always looked good. It always looked good. But we are always so busy tearing each other down and not seeing the beauty of what we have. When are we going to stop? When are we going to stop? What, when Louis Vuitton puts a do-rat, put a, uh, puts a velvet bonnet with some rhinestones? Then we'll do it. When we see some rich chicks in first class putting a bonnet over to protect their hair, then we'll do it. Hmm? Is that when it'll be good enough? Because when Monique talks about being respectable, she's talking about respectability politics. And if there's one thing I can't stand, it's respectability politics. I grew, grew up in an all-white area. I am very educated. I went to numerous universities, and I have worked corporate jobs, and I've worked things for my own. I know for a fact, right, respectability politics are nothing but an excuse to discriminate against. That's all it is. That's all it is. You somehow think that if what? You talk like them, if you dress like them, if you act like them, you think that's what's keeping them from letting you move into the neighborhoods? You think that's what's keeping them from treating you with respect? That's what you think the good, that's what you think the issue is? That's what you think the issue is that if I walk through dressed like I'm going for a job interview um, through the TSA and to the airport, that somebody that is racist, prejudiced, misogynist, internalized misogyny, you think that's gonna make them treat me better? Because I look better? Oh, but I get what it is. You think I have to make myself worthy, right? I have to make myself more worthy. You think I have to do something to make myself more presentable. And let's talk about that presentable because I find it ironic that Monique, 
who did not hit the respectability politics for the Oprah, right? And the Lee Daniels and the Tyler Perry's of the world. And you are blacklisted because you, were, you weren't the right type of black, according to you. This is your words. I find it odd that now you're walking through the goddamn airport where in 2021, I don't care who you are, the airport is a glorified bus terminal. It is a bus hub. It is nothing to say that you got on an airplane. It does not take any special talent. It does not take any accumulation of wealth. It doesn't even take any love. Luck. walking through the airport where people are literally going about their business dress when it's early literally trying to be comfortable literally trying to get literally trying to protect their hair in the way they see fit so they can get out and actually go into that real world because they know they're being judged but it's sad that there's like one of their own their auntie is judging them but let's talk about what auntie said you yourself were the uh you yourself were a victim of not being the right type of you want to talk about respecting yourself, Monique? We live in a fat phobic society. Weren't you laughed, shamed, pushed out, made fun of until you got that breakout role in Precious because of your weight? But you want to talk about somebody about let's make sure we always choose the right themselves? This is what I'm saying about it's really important to separate the message from the messenger because people are flawed. This reminds me honestly of that Jason Lee, Angela Stanton thing. And y'all can say what y'all want. I mean, I probably will be talking about it later on my channel, but y'all can say what you want. Jason Lee is a piece of, right? Horrible person, dark heart, right? Angela Stanton, horrible person, dark heart. I'm not going to sit here and rule for one or the other because guess what? It's like watching David Duke and Donald Trump go to war. I really don't care who wins. You guys are both horrible. Whoever's wins, we're still going to have to defeat whoever's left. So I look at it as two people who are perfectly horrible going into on each other, right? But I find it odd that Monique who has been the victim of colorism, who has been the victim of fat phobia, who has been the victim of respectability politics, gets on and says, but I say this out of love. Let me tell y'all something. This is why it, it, we need to protect the, the brains of the youth because so many things are said out of love. When they told you to go back to abusive relationship, it was told out of love. When they told you your braids weren't right for corporate, it was told out of love. When they told y'all to be quiet because you'd make other people uncomfortable, it was said out of love. So much poison is passed through love, but it's not love. Let's talk about what it is. She's literally setting generational curses into play. Happily setting generational curses. And this gets me to this whole thing about separating the message for the messengers. You know why Monique was really mad about the Netflix shit? You know why Monique was really mad about all this stuff I'm beginning to see? Because Monique thought she was playing the game and she realized she wasn't even invited to the party and it made her mad to no end. She thought she was being respectable. She thought she was dressing like a queen and looking like a queen so she could be taken like a queen. And they found out that, nope, they still see you as a dusty, busty, whatever you want to call yourself and you are not worth the level of respect. And you were down here where you look at all these young girls walking by and this kept daddy. This is the same woman that was called that calls in business meetings her manager slash husband daddy. This is a woman that told stories about how he goes in and breaks her down on her knees mentally, has her crying with all her heart. And then he gathers her in his arms and says, look, lifts her head up and says, but did I lie? Was it not true? This is a woman that is on some pimp and whole relationship mess in business meetings and carries that giving you advice on what respectability is. Let me tell you something. Can no woman whose edges aren't laid, yes, that's my respectable politics, right? I was out in the sun, so excuse the edges. Can no woman who sits there and revels in a pimp and whole dynamic in her relationship, right? Tell me shit. Tell me shit, tell me shit about what it looks like to be respectful, how I have to look to be taken serious. Let me tell you something, Monique, since you forgot the definition of a queen. A queen, royalty is by lineage, it is by blood, it is in you. Whether you are dressed like you're the queen of the now or whether you are sleeping on the street, that lineage, that thing that makes you beautiful, that makes you sparkle, that makes you handsome, it is in you. Nothing that you wear on your outside is going to earn, garner anybody's respect. If they say they do, they are lying. If they say they do, they are lying because let me tell you something. 
They only covet what you have. The fact that another human being, I have to come dress like I'm dressing for a job interview for you to see the queendom in there. If not, I'm a queen and tell. Let me tell y'all something. If you guys are listening to Monique's dumb ass, this goes for anybody, right? Let me know what y'all think in the comments, right? But this goes to anybody that's actually listening to Monique's dumb ass. Seriously. You want to listen to Monique? You want to hear what she said about queen dumb and queen this and queen that? Let me tell you something. All you're looking for, going to do is set yourself up to find another daddy that's going to manage you and ruin your career over their ego and play you and mentally abuse you and have you, who once was one of the brightest stars in the Hollywood solar system, playing fucking three shows at the Jacksonville Cab uh, uh, Cabernet and the Who Gives a Fuck Arena of East Bloomberg. Anyway... That's my PSA. Let's move on. Go, cause oh God, this has me so. She's just giving a warning. Don't forget, y'all, ladies. Monique put her, you on notice that if she sees you, she's gonna tap you on the shoulder and let you know that ain't it, and you are not a queen. I wish, I wish Monique and her dusty edges and her daddy slash pimp manager would set the nerve to turn around and tap me on the shoulder and tell me that I need to be a queen in training. You know what Monique reminds me of, honestly? She reminds me of those people in pimp and home movies that try to recruit other hoes. You are so, and this, listen, women, this goes for all races, not just black, Latina, white, Native American, Indian, Asian, Southeast Asian, whatever it is, y'all. Internalized patriarchy and misogyny is crazy. I know as a black woman, I can speak to that, but I've seen it happen across all races with all my girlfriends. We have to start being smarter about the elders we look up to because the elders start the fucking general generational courses and they roll them through to us. And when I say elder, I mean anyone you look up. You could be 18 and your elder's 25. You could be 25 and your elder's 70. We have to stop putting people on pedestals and start actually digging through it and be like, what does your mind work? It's like Kwame Brown said, yeah, I'm going to do a video about him. It's like Kwame, sometimes you got to chew the meat and spit out the fat. But let me tell you something. In the case of Monique's shit, this is all fucking fat. This is poison. This is poison that she is trying to put in the hearts and minds of the next generation. And it is sick. It's sick. It's sick. Putting out there, hey queen, hey queen, hey queen. Well, can we start? Bitch, it is an action. It is an action. Do you not realize that the fact that, this is a funny thing, do you not realize that the fact that you are sitting in an airport as a black woman, child, man, and you can be in a bonnet, that you can be in your slippers and still get served? Do you not realize we are putting in action? I'm so sick of respectability politics. I'm sick of it. We deserve to be here no matter what we look like, no matter what we are wearing, no matter what we have on. We deserve to be here. We deserve respect, not because of what you are wearing, not because of how my hair is done, not because of how much money I have, not because how much pretty you think I am, not because you think how handsome somebody is. We deserve to be here to take up air just because we were put on this earth and the reason we have the most precious energy source in this universe that everything is fighting for, life. That is the reason that we deserve to be where we are. That is the reason that we deserve to be respected. That is the reason why we are worthy because we are breathing air, because we are alive, because we have some of the most precious life force in this universe. Everybody alive on this planet has that same life force and is worthy of the same respect. I'm sick of this respectability politics. I'm sick of Monique. And it makes me look at what happened with Oprah and Lee Daniels and all that stuff so differently. Monique wasn't this warrior fighting for what's right. She wasn't mistreated. You're just mad that in, to quote Kwame Brown, with the get along gang, you're just mad that in the respectability politics crew, you got pushed out. You just, you're mad in the respectability, politi uh, uh, respectability politics, you did measure up. It's literally to me the same as a woman being mad because Kevin Samuel said that she was a five instead of a 10. Why? You agree with all this mess he's saying, you're just mad that even these stupid rules that you have impressed, these generational curses that you are spewing, you're just mad that you don't measure up to it. And that's sad. That's sad. That's sad. I know I'm going to move on, but I just got one. Sorry. I stand corrected. Monique was not encouraging everyone. Not her, just a tap. She's saying that all old heads need to go tap. So let me tell y'all something. If I come out here with my hair looking a mess, which is more likely than not, 
look with some damn shower shoes and socks and sweats and baggy t-shirt i please don't tap me on my shoulder because you will get embarrassed you will hear the voice of a new generation again y'all we got to break these generational curses we have to stop and some of it might be that the people we look up to the people we look to guide us the people we look we need to start realizing that sometimes it's not even the fact that they're doing it on purpose like monique said baby this was said out of love let me tell you, I can inject poison in you by force or I can put it in love and the love does so much. We need to start accepting that the people we look to guidance are even more lost than we are. And a lot of shit they think they're doing that set out of love because they have a warped version of the way life is going to be and they're trying to impose it on us. And it's time we actually break free and say, let's break these generational curses. Let's break this sick way of thinking. Let's break these stupid elitist classes ideas that that we have all been ingrained in but that the older generation is trying to sprinkle in our head through love y'all monique is trash and i don't care what y'all say she's trash let me know what you you know i, I care what y'all think in the comments but let me know what you think in the comments this woman again i used to have so much respect for her and she's still a talented woman she still can make me laugh but let me tell you something she is trash her mind has been poisoned she is in, in a mentally abusive relationship and she has munchausen's disease whatever you want to call it but i don't ever want anybody to ever quote anything monique says about black women black culture black society or any culture in society because she's just not credible she can go ahead with those respectability politics to daddy island and leave me the hell alone all right you know what let me go cool off i'm gonna put the funny shit in another video i'll talk to y'all later Bye.